Hello, uh, do you sell black shoelaces? Let me see. Well, I've got these, but they're white. White. Um, hold on a minute. Okay. So that'll be seven dollars and fifteen cents, please. Good luck with that. Thank you. Goodbye. Hi. Hello there. One muffin. That'll be two dollars and forty, please. I don't understand. What did I do? Uh, are you French? Yes, I'm French. Why are you in town? I'm here for a conference. Uh, I work for Belém Insurance. Belém Insurance? Yes, Belém Insurance. What's your name? Benoit Gondou. Do you have a piece of identification on you? Yes, uh, my, my passport is in my jacket pocket. Which pocket? Uh, the inside one, uh, left breast pocket. I'm very sorry, sir. I, I seem to have confused you with someone else. We're looking for someone who matches your description. I, I really am truly sorry. I, the resemblance is uncanny. And this man, what did, what did he do? He's a serial rapist. I see. Can I go then? Of course. Have a good day, sir. Yes. Chérie, t'as eu mon message Oh, bah écoute, ça va, il fait pas très beau, mais ça va bien, ouais, ouais. Et là, je te laisse parce que je suis un peu pressé, je te rappelle un peu plus tard, d'accord Allez, t'embrasse Juju pour moi. Et je t'aime. With over 7,000 employees, our organization generated $2.1 billion worth of business with 4 million customers on three continents. We have a vision to provide our clients with insurance at each and every stage of their lives. Alors, t'es sûr que tu veux pas venir manger avec nous Non, je suis fatigué, je vais rentrer. Pourquoi tu descends dans un hôtel aussi Il n'y a aucun confort, il n'y a pas de piscine, il n'y a pas de sauna, il n'y a rien. C'est ça qui me plaît, justement. Les resorts, c'est toujours la même chose. Là, au moins, ça change un peu. Bon, OK, d'accord, si tu vois ça comme ça. Ah, des viens, quoi. On est là pour faire la fête aussi. Mm. Demain soir, je te promets. OK. À demain, alors, hein? Allez, amusez-vous bien. Ne buvez pas trop. Hello? Oh, hello. Is there a problem? No, no problem. I was just driving by and I spotted you. 
I thought I would take this opportunity to apologize again for this morning. Did you lose something? Oh, uh, yes, my phone. That's a relief. <laughs> I was scared I had dropped it somewhere. I acted hastily, and I just never should have put you in that situation without being 100% sure. No harm done. I know, but still. Well, good night. Good night. Mr. Ganda. Listen, my shift just ended. I was wondering if you'd let me buy you a drink. Right now? Consider it an official police apology beverage. <laughs> OK. But only one. I have to be up early for my conference tomorrow. Just one, I promise, to ease my conscience. I'm Kate, by the way. Or Officer Logan, whatever you prefer. Hello, Officer Logan. Uh, let me just go put on something a little more appropriate. I'll be here. Five minutes. out of your uniform? Yeah. Well, I'm not allowed to wear it when I'm off duty. So, do you drink beer? Sure. Great. There's this little bar not too far from here. They have great microbrewed stuff on tap. Sounds good. Shall we go? Yeah. Um, but can we take your car? <laughs> yes. <laughs> no problem. So where do you live in France? Paris. Paris. Oh, I've always wanted to go there. But I hate traveling by plane. I Oh, it's right up here. Uh, wait, you shouldn't park here. Why? It's not a good idea to block an emergency exit, you know, in case of a fire or something. Just, um, park over there. Uh, okay. Just straight back. They have every kind of beer you can imagine, so... Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's something you like. <laughs> no, I'm from Calgary. It's been just under three months since I moved here. Oh, so you're quite new to the place. How do you like it so far? A lot. It's a lot more chill than Calgary, which is exactly what I was looking for. Calgary, uh, they had the Olympics, the Winter Olympics in Calgary once. 88? Yeah, I, my dad took me to go see the giant slalom. I was only little, but I remember being super impressed. <laughs> and so why did you decide to move here? Um, well, my mom was basically impossible. Um, I just couldn't live with her anymore. And when my dad died, she remarried this total jerk, so that didn't help. <laughs> And do you like working for the police? Yeah, it's been really good. It's been, well, every time my mother calls me, she says, hey, you're still alive. <laughs> She's just convinced that I don't have what it takes for the job. But, but so far, I've proven her wrong, so. So this might be a stupid question, but if you feel like you're in danger, are you allowed to shoot someone? Yes, sir. And after what happened to me during training, I wouldn't hesitate. See this? This is from being stabbed. And if I had used my gun, I wouldn't have had to spend three weeks in a hospital bed fighting for my life. That's... Uh... Yeah, it's crazy, huh? And just think, if the blade had gone in just a little bit higher, I wouldn't even be sitting here with you right now. So I guess you're lucky, in a way. Yeah. 
I guess you could look at it that way. So your name's Benoit, huh? That's right. Benoit. French names always sound so good when they're pronounced the right way. <laughs> Are you married? Yes. Kids? A little girl. Oh, yeah. What's her name? Juliette. Juliette. Oh, how old is she? Eleven. Eleven. That's such a good age. Oh, you're so lucky. I would love to have a little girl. Do you have a picture? Yes. Oh, my God. Oh, she's so cute. I was her age when my dad died. He was a police officer, too. He was killed by this 14-year-old kid when he was trying to break up a fight in a record store. If you can believe it, yeah. That's so fun. Do you want another beer? Uh, no, thanks. Remember, you promised. That's right. I did, didn't I? <laughs> Just one drink. <laughs> I'm leaving Sunday. And what's this conference all about? Ooh, that's difficult to say precisely. Um, it's a series of seminars on Instagram, but the details are very, very technical. We work with probabilities a lot. It's not very glamorous. Well, give me an example of some of this probability stuff. An example? OK, well, take me, for instance. If you factor in all the variables of my existence, I'm scheduled to die at the age of 82. Wow. That's incredible. You can really calculate something like that? Yes. Do you live in a house or an apartment? House. A small one, but it's not even in great shape, but it's mine. I bought it with the money my dad left me. Does it need a lot of work? Um, nothing incredibly major. Um, just repainting, mostly. I started to repaint the exterior pink, but my neighbors didn't like it, so I stopped. But it's too bad, because it looked nice. Did someone say something to you? No. No, but I could just tell that they were starting to wonder about me. I see. I like this music. Pretty impressive job. Why do you stay at this cheap motel? But I like motels. They make me feel like I'm in an American movie. <laughs> Thanks. I had a nice time. Me too. So we're all square? You don't think I'm the worst cop ever? No, I always wondered what it would be like to get arrested. And now I know. <laughs> well, good night. I hope the rest of the seminar goes well. Thank you. It was nice to meet you. You too.
Sorry, I. Thing is, I um. I think you're a nice guy, and I'd like to have another drink with you. I bought a bottle of whiskey. Do you drink whiskey? Uh, yes. Um, but if if it's not cool, then um, just tell me. You know, I won't be offended because. No, the problem is I, I really need to get some sleep. Okay. <laughs> Understood. I, um, sorry. I don't know what I was thinking. Uh, wait. I think, uh, I think I would like to, to, to have a drink with you. You sure? Yes, yes, I'm sure. Okay. Um, we go? Why are you still here? I fell asleep. I'll go home tomorrow. No, Dad. Enough talk. You've been saying that for three days. Go on home. I can't drive five hours now. Yeah, you can. Just go. Get on home. Can, can you give me a couple of bucks for the drive? Ça s'est très bien passé. Le, le directeur de la, de la branche allemande était vraiment intéressant. Et on oh lance une petite ville. Il n'y a, a pas grand-chose à faire. Mais euh, le paysage autour est magnifique, par contre. Le DVD de Bob l'Éponge, non, j'en sais rien. Moi, est-ce que t'as as regardé derrière la télé Ouais, toi aussi. Bon, bah, je te rappelle demain euh, quand je peux. Oui, je t'embrasse, chérie. Franchement, j'ai pas été déçu. Avec un homme comme lui, Pellem est sûr d'aller dans la bonne direction. Il a une vision, ça c'est sûr. Hein On trouve pas euh, Si, si, si. Il y a un an à Londres, j'avais déjà été impressionné. J'ai beaucoup aimé ton discours hier. Ah, merci. Isabelle, tu me passes la moutarde, s'il te plaît.
Hi, how's it going? Hello. I saw your car in the lot, and I thought I'd come by and let you know that my shift is over at 6 o'clock. Do you want to go grab some dinner? I'm sorry, but I don't think we should see each other again. Hey, do you know you got a pretty much flat front tire there? Oh, yeah, you're right. You're getting a high-speed chase. I don't think you're catching the guy. Yeah. Well, do you think it's punctured? Nah, just need some air. Right, well, I guess I'll get on that. Always give your car a looking over before you get in. You never know. Will do. OK, you have yourself a good one. You too. Oui, bonjour Isabelle, c'est Benoît. Écoute, euh, ben, je suis désolé, mais je vais pas pouvoir sortir avec vous ce soir, je me sens pas très bien. Non, non, mais c'est rien de grave, j'ai attrapé ça dans l'avion, c'est tout. Oui, c'est ça, je vais me reposer, ça ira mieux demain, c'est plus important. Voilà, ben, je te remercie Isabelle, et puis à demain matin, et bonne soirée. What do you want to eat? I'd love a hot dog. <laughs> sure. What's his name? Goof. He's husky. The ones that pull sleds? Mm -hmm. They're beautiful. I guess a colleague gave them to me. I didn't have the heart to say no. Why not? 
I don't know. It, it leaves a bad impression if you say you don't like animals. I suppose, yes. You cheat on your wife often? No, never. I'm still hungry. I'm going to go get something to eat. Do you want something? Sure. A Coke. Well, hold on, I'll come with you. my other shoe. You're allowed to carry a gun when you're off duty? No, I'm not. But the gun box in my car where I'm supposed to keep it is broken, so... You want to hold it? See what it feels like? Uh, no, I'd really prefer not to. Come on, take it. Give you a taste of what it's like to be on duty. Keep your finger flat against the side and grip it tight with a firm wrist. Now come over here. Okay, see the clock radio? Yes. So raise your arm and hold it straight. And now aim for the clock. It says 1016 and imagine that it's an escaped convict. So aim carefully and think of the target. When it turns to 1017, that's when you would shoot. Pow! Man. Oh. Are you a fucking idiot? I'm sorry, I didn't do it on purpose. Didn't do it on purpose? The fuck are you talking about? I can't believe you just did that. If someone heard that, officers will be here in a few minutes. I can see the bullet in there. How am I gonna explain this to them? We've gotta get that bullet out of there, otherwise they're gonna know that it was from my gun. I have a knife in my bag. Get it. This is really, really serious. This is a criminal offense. I'm not even supposed to have my gun on me right now. It was just an accident. Well, accident or not, firing off a gun in a motel is a criminal act. End of story. I can't get it, it's too lodged in there. Be careful, you'll damage the blade. I don't give a fuck about your goddamn knife, okay? I'm in deep shit because of you, so don't push me right now. Well, looks like we're not first on the scene. Yep. Let me try. Somebody called in to report a discharged firearm on the premises. Yeah, but uh, I didn't hear it. These guys did. There's already police officers on the scene, huh? Uh, no. Well, there's a patrol car parked in the parking lot. And how long has it been here? There's a police car in the parking lot? I didn't notice. Why don't you go check the plates and call it in to dispatch, see whose car it is. So you guys are sure that uh, it was a gunshot you heard? Yeah, I'm certain, definitely. Yeah, without a doubt. Well, where'd it come from? Room four. No way. It was room six, the room right next to mine. OK, so who's in room six? Uh, six is empty. There's no one there. What about room four? A uh, guy called uh, Benoit Gando in that room. He checked in yesterday. Sounds like a French name. Yeah, maybe. Uh, actually, I here, a photocopy of his passport. Yeah, he's French, all right. Oh, shit! There's a cop car outside. The car belongs to Kate Logan. Logan, that's the new kid, right? Yeah, she's not on duty right now. She finished at six. 
Strange. All right, let's go take a look at uh, room number four. I can see it. Come on. Shit, they're here. Should they answer it? No, Wait. no. Can you go, please? I'm so fucked. Oh, sorry. I took the key to room six. Oh, my God. Sorry. Yeah, I'm gonna bust down the door. Move. No, no, wait. Let me just r run down there. I'll get the right key. It'll take me two seconds. Why don't you go cover the rear? Okay. Come on, we'll go out the bathroom. Come on. Okay. Go on. No, we should stay here and just explain what happened. Explain? Explain what? That we were playing games with my service pistol? What the hell's taking him so long? I'll go check. There's no reason for me to run. Oh, please. You don't really think it's that simple, do you? Running away makes absolutely no sense. Uh, you OK? What happened? I'm going to find a solution to this problem, but right now we need to go. OK, that's it. I'm tired of waiting here. Back up. Couldn't find the exit to the back of the building. I'm gonna have to go around. Back up. Whoa. I'm not going anywhere. Do you get it now? What the hell took you so long? The desk clerk fell behind the counter. Looks like he went out through there. Here. You see anything? I see someone running. Well, go! So what do we do now? We get out of town as fast as possible. But I've got things to do tomorrow. I, I can't just leave. Did you hear what I said? Yeah, you have things to do tomorrow. What am I supposed to do about it? This guy must have ran like a jackrabbit. Oh, yeah? I'm parched. Would you give me some water? I'm thinking the desk clerk's just a goddamn junkie. We blew the room breach because of him. Oh, you got that right. Thanks. Let me check this out. Looks like a bullet hole. Oh, yeah, that is a bullet hole. I can see the glint of something metallic in there. OK. Go get some tools. I'm going to call for backup. Tools? Uh, sure we should be digging around in there? 
Well, you got a point. We should leave that for forensics. Yeah. Okay. Well, I forgot my pills. Would you mind getting them? Okay. What are you doing? A better idea? Get in. Come on, get in. Thanks. There's no sign of a second person having been in the room, but uh, that doesn't prove anything. What do you think? Beats me. So, what do we know about this Benoit Gando? He's a French national. He booked his room until Sunday. Okay, let's go see what the hell is going on. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay, understood. Thanks. Officer Logan is not at home. She doesn't carry a cell. We have no way to reach her. What do you think? I think it's bad news. I'm no kidding. I'll wait here with Sleepy at. Will do. Excuse me, what room did the gunshot take place in? Number four. And the occupant fled? Yeah. Keep your eyes open for a gas station. That's it, pull over. Four. What are you doing? Don't touch that. Stop this car, or I will stop it for you. And where are you going exactly? To the police. Oh, yeah? Yeah. And what are you going to tell them? That we had a drink. That you shot me again and that I shot it accidentally. No way. You tell them that and I lose my job. I'm afraid that's your problem, not mine. You, you, you should never have given me the gun. Okay. Fine. You do what you want. But when I give my deposition, I'm gonna tell them that we also had sex, which I'm sure your wife will be thrilled to hear. From now on, you do as I say. We're gonna drive some more, we're gonna find a motel, and I'm gonna do some thinking. There's a way out of the situation that doesn't involve me losing my job and you losing your wife. It's an eight millimeter, fired from a Beretta. Same as our service model. Right. So that would mean that Logan's almost definitely involved somehow. And she's probably in danger. It's better if we're not seen together. Get down. Oh, I need money. Get something to drink as well. I'm very thirsty. the apple juice? No, I still don't see it. So I guess we're all up. And thirty dollars worth of gas on pump two. Okay.
Thanks. Have a night. Did you go? What were you doing? I needed to pee. I told you to stay hidden. What's this? It's strawberry milk. Why didn't you just get water? Tell your wife. What does she do for a living? She's a nuclear technician. Like as in for bombs? No, as in for electricity. She must be really smart. Yes, yeah, she is. What's her name? That's none of your business. I just thought of something. What? They're gonna ask for identification when we check in. We'll have to sleep in the car. It's safer that way. Okay, but we're going to have the same problem tomorrow. And the day after tomorrow. Calm down. What did I say earlier? That you would find a solution. Right. So just give me time to find one. I... We'll get some sleep tonight, and then tomorrow I'll be thinking more clearly. Let's just find a more secluded spot. Over there, that's perfect. Take the back seat. I'll stay up front.
morning. Morning. I'd like a coffee to go, please. What size? Large, please. I like your accent. Where are you from? Holland. Oh, yeah? Yeah. It's 140, please. Thank you. Thank you. I just went to get a coffee. And you didn't think to tell me? Look at this. They're saying I kidnapped you. Wait, let me read it. And now I'm getting into deeper and deeper trouble. But you didn't kidnap me. So you have nothing to worry about. What they think you did is one thing, and our strategy for dealing with it is another. <laughs> Look at us. We are in the middle of nowhere. And you're talking about what? And you're talking about strategy? I think you need help. OK. Well, if you don't want my help, then that's fine. What do you mean? Take it. What? Why? Well, you're the kidnapper, right? Right? Where are you going? To the police. I'm gonna tell them everything you did to me. They'll be relieved that I managed to escape. You can't do that. Okay. Hey, okay! I'll give you one last chance to figure out a solution. One last chance. but I'm driving. If you want. Hand me the coffee. Oh, putain. My seminar started six minutes ago. What do I do? Don't answer it. Actually, can I see that for a minute? Hey! Why did you do that? They would have been able to track us with it. Where are you going? Hey! Benoit, stop! I'll call them. I'll tell them the truth about what happened. I give up. You win. We'll go to a motel. I'll call them and tell them everything, and we'll just have to live with the consequences. The facts are the facts. There's nothing I can do to change that. Good. I I'm glad you're finally seeing reason. Well, maybe my mom was right. Maybe I'm just not cut out for this job. Can I ask you a favor? Could you please not mention anything about us sleeping together? Okay. Thank you. Okay. But why do we need to go to a motel to make the call? Can't we just use a public telephone? No, I need to sit somewhere quiet and just really think about how to present things. Okay. We can go back to that motel we passed last night. It's only a few minutes away.
Hello. Hi there. Uh, we would like a room, please. Sure. For how long? Uh, just for the day. Okay. I'll just be needing a piece of picture ID. room 209 on the second floor. Thank you. What's wrong? You were acting strangely back there. I'm just nervous about making this call, about what I'm going to tell them. Oh, it's going to be fine. Listen, we need to go over our story step by step to make sure we tell the same version of events. Okay. Because if we contradict each other at all, things will get complicated. Yes, absolutely. The hard part is coming up with a story that covers everything but leaves out the part where we slept together. Maybe we could just say that we got along well. Yeah. Yeah, we could say that. J'ai encore une petite course à faire et j'arrive. Oui, j'ai pensé à tes feutres, ne t'inquiète pas. D'accord, mais d'abord, tu finis tes devoirs. Attends, ma chérie, ne quitte pas, j'ai un autre à toi. Oui, allô Hello. Yes, I can speak English. That's me, yes. I realized my mistake. 
apologized and sent him on his way. How did you make contact with him again after that? That night, when I was driving home after my shift, I spotted him in the parking lot of his motel. He was looking for something in his car. So I took the opportunity to stop and apologize again. How did he react? Well, uh, the situation was relaxed. We even got along. He invited me to go get a drink, and he seemed like a nice guy, so I accepted. We left my police car in the motel parking lot and took his car to the bar. Were you still in uniform? No. No, I was in street clothes. I always keep a change of clothes in my car. What did you do with your firearm? I uh, locked it up in the trunk safe of the car. What was the name of the bar you went to? The Crocodile. Okay, and afterwards? Afterwards, uh, we went back to the motel, said goodnight, and that was it. And how is it that you came to see him yet again? Uh, he suggested that we see each other again the next day. I mean, we had a nice time at the bar, so I didn't see why I should say no. So tell us about the second night. We went out to eat hot dogs, and then we went back to the motel. He invited me in for a drink, and I hesitated, but I accepted. But if you went willingly, how did things go so wrong? Well, once we were in the room, he started coming on to me in this really tactless way, and I was turned off, so I rejected his advances, and he went into a rage. A rage? Yes. He really lost it. He threw me to the ground and pinned me there, and I reached for my gun, but he got to it first. But if you were off duty, why'd you have your gun on you? The, uh, the lock on my trunk safe was jammed, so I had no choice but to keep it on me. Did he give you any reason to be suspicious of him before that point? No, no. Um, he seemed really nice and um, distinguished. So when he got a hold of your gun, why did he shoot? He ordered me to undress, and I refused. So he shot off around to intimidate me. He must have known that firing a gun was bound to attract attention. I don't think he was thinking clearly at that point. I, something in him had obviously snapped. Why did he try to dig the bullet out of the wall? Um, he, didn't, he didn't want anyone to know that I had actually been in his room. The bullet would have been able to have been identified as police issue. What was his objective when he took you with him? Um, evading the police. Leaving behind all his belongings in a room registered under his name? Not much of a plan. It seemed as though when he became, I think once he became violent, planning went out the window. How do you steal the car? I mean, insurance executives don't usually have those kinds of skills. He did it. I, he must have hotwired it. I, I'm not sure how. The um, desk clerk at the second motel told us that you didn't appear to be injured when you checked in, but remember sensing that something wasn't quite right. I was under his control. I was scared of, of what he might do to me. The injuries I have now are a result of what happened when I tried to escape. When exactly did you try to escape? When he was opening the door to the room. But he caught me in the corridor. He beat you? No. Well, not exactly, not with his fists. Once we were in the room, he, um, he slammed me against the wall, and then uh, against the mirror. How were you able to regain control of the situation? Uh, 
at one point, he sat down and pointed the gun at me and demanded that I take my clothes off. So I began to remove my blouse. But I knew that something really bad would happen if if I didn't at least try something. So I grabbed the chair next to me and I, I hit him with it as hard as I could. And he was so surprised that I was able to regain control of my weapon. So if you had control of the situation, why did you shoot him? Because, because he was raging and uncontrollable and I was terrified. If you'd like to speak with a counselor, we can provide you with one. No, thank you. I. I'll be all right. I, I knew that dangerous situations came with the job when I joined the force. Officer Logan, thank you very much for your cooperation. Your colleague will accompany you home. Logan has just left the RCMP offices where she was answering questions relating to her abduction. Investigators say she seems mentally and physically traumatized, perhaps explaining why she didn't wish to discuss the details of her ordeal. We will continue to cover this story in the hours to come, but it seems fairly safe to say there will be no charges laid against the young officer. I'm going to take that for you. Thank you. Your husband's belongings have been examined, so you're welcome to take them. Now, Officer Randall will take you to the coroner's office. We need you to confirm that it is, in fact, your husband's body. I'm sorry, it's unpleasant, but necessary. Yes, of course. I, I just don't understand how my husband could have done such a thing. Human nature is strange. Every day we deal with people who do things their friends and family thought they were incapable of. But uh, my husband was a completely normal man. He had absolutely no reason to act like this. Uh, business travel often leads to irrational behavior. Take even the most normal person out of the context of their regular lives and they can lose their sense of moral direction. Thank you for signing these. We need to follow certain procedures in order for the French government to authorize the repatriation of your husband's body. Thank you. 
too. And this one you keep. I'm very sorry for your loss. the room. I apologize for the wait. I'm giving you a copy of the police report. I need it for insurance purposes. Okay. Thank you. Obviously, my husband is guilty of many things in this affair. But, uh, after all, the policewoman did kill him. The facts have been well established. I'm not sure what you're getting at exactly. I'm wondering if there will be any repercussions for her. Prison time or anything. Mrs. Gando, Officer Logan acted out of self-defense. Your husband's actions, unfortunately, left you no other choice. Yes. I understand. Once again, let me just say how much we regret this whole situation. I can only imagine how hard this has been on you. Can I ask you a favor? Officer Logan. Hello. Hello. Come in. We'll just wait in the kitchen. Would anyone like something to drink? No, we're, we're fine, thanks. No, thank you. Please, sit. They told me that you joined the police force only a short time ago. Yes. Yeah, it's only been a few months. I want you to know that I really am very sorry. I am sorry too. 
for what my husband did to you. I, I just don't understand why, if you went to his room willingly, things ended so badly. Because I changed my mind once I was there, and he took that very badly. He started to... Um, my husband had absolutely no experience with guns. I can't understand how he could have managed to steal yours and know how to use it. I don't know what to tell you. He was your husband. You would know better than me. It's almost as if you were talking about a man I didn't know at all. A complete stranger. It's hard for me to accept that we are even talking about Benoit. Thank you for your help. Very welcome, Mrs. Gando. She had a guy with her, but he stayed in the car hiding, like a little kid would do. She definitely wasn't acting like a kidnap victim or anything. Hello. Hi. That'll be 
375, please. Okay. 315, 340. You're that policewoman we've been seeing on the news, aren't you? Yep, that's me. I've read all about you. It's incredible what you went through. You're pretty brave. Yeah, thanks. So, okay. Hey, actually, weren't you here that night for gas? I could have sworn that was you. Yeah, that was me. I would have never have guessed that you were actually a hostage at that point. Why didn't you try to get away when you uh, came in to pay? Um, he had my gun, so he would have shot me. Oh, yeah. Oh, for sure. But still, I think I would have tried to get away. Well, people react differently. I mean, I decided to make sure I regain control before trying anything. Well, I guess you made the right decision in the end. I'm sure glad you killed that son of a bitch. He got what he deserved. Have a nice day. You too. Take me, for instance. If you factor in all the variables of my existence, I'm scheduled to die at the age of 82. Wow, that's incredible. You can really calculate something like that? Yes. Tell the world I've gone and left my post. To find myself and the girl I love the most I've got a picture of you To remember you by If you ever pass me by Or come this way again Tell Got a picture of you. 